Good afternoon everyone and welcome to our new webinar regarding the engineering and manufacturing T-level. I'm Sam Ashman and today I will be delivering the curriculum delivery plan webinar. Just waiting for our, some of our guests to enter, so a couple of more minutes and then we'll start the delivery. Thank you. So thank you for joining us today on this webinar regarding the curriculum delivery plans for the engineering and manufacturing T-level. So today using the webinar platform, uh, you can send any information via the chat um, and I'll log into the question area. I do recommend putting it into the question area so we can like share all the information and ask questions right at the end or throughout the presentation. You have been set to mute, but again, if you want to come and ask any questions, then do please raise your hand. Um, and then we'll be able to unmute you and through that way as well. And then after the webinar, um, the resources and uh, CPD certificate will be sent out to all attendees following this event. And also we've made sure that the recordings and the actual presentations will be available on our City and Girls website as well. So just a quick introduction to the engineer manufacturing team. So I'm Sam Ashman, the technical advisor for engineer manufacturing and the T-level lead who's been looking after the T-level for engineer manufacturing. Um, on the call today, I have John O'Porter who's also our Technical Advisor for Engineering and Manufacturing at City and Girls, and he looks after our apprenticeship provision and on programme qualification. Um, Jazz from EAL, I've noticed that he's attend is attendee today. Um, Jazz, is, we will work closely in partnership with EAL regarding this Engineering and Manufacturing T-level, so welcome to this webinar, Jazz. Um, we've got our industry managers, Robert Stott and Scott Wilkins. Robert is predominantly working with the employers for the T-levels, where Scott works with the employers regarding our other portfolio for engineering and manufacturing, such as endpoint assessment and apprenticeships. And then in a couple of weeks time, you, you will be seeing Alison Whittle on our next webinar. And um, for those who are in delivery, and um, when we talk about the actual core assessment, but those for pre-delivery, you can come and join that webinar and that's on the 26th. Um, and we will be taking you through the actual employee set project and examinations. And our Alison works closely with our HEIs as well. So for our agenda today, just a bit quick overview of welcome. Um, just a quick overview regarding the technical qualification. Uh, for those who's new to the T-levels, just a bit of an overview regarding the website. Then we're going to take you into a high level of overview about how you can deliver the T-level over the two years program and what a curriculum plan would look like. And um, mapping to curriculum plan plans as well. And then what an example of a week delivery could look like. We also do some supports and guidance and um, types of events, webinars that's been coming up, uh, websites to support providers. And then again, with this T-level fully being developed now in the first year delivery, there's some opportunities to work for City and Girls, such as marking, TQAs, etc. And then when the engineering textbook is going to be released from Hodder Education. If you missed our previous webinars, such about the familiarisation about what's inside each occupational specialism, or how the T-level has been put together, the entry requirements and, re and results. They are available on our events and webinar page and the recording of slide decks on there as well, as this webinar is only going to be about the curriculum planning and mapping as well. So what I will do, I will pass you over to Jono Porter, who's going to go through the next couple of slides with you. Over to you, Jono. Thank you for that, Sam. Can you just go to the next slide, please, Sam?
Cheers. Thanks for that, Sam. Right. I hope everyone is safe and well. So I want to just take you through the, some of the slides for the information regarding the tier levels to support to new providers. So on this slide, you can see the registration information for the core component and also for the occupational specialism, which are related to the T level for engineering. The first key point is that doing the registration is important to register the learner on the core first, followed by the chosen OS. The second key point is to make sure that, that you're registering the learners to the correct core and the correct OS related to the chosen pathway. So for example, if I was registering the learner on the fabrication of welding as their chosen OS, the pathway will be the engineering manufacturing processing and control. The number for the core will be the 8730-13. And the OS number for the fabrication of welding will be the 8713-34. So it's really important when you register the learners, you register them on the correct pathway, which will be the core first, followed by the chosen OS specialism after. Next slide, please, Sam. Okay, so if you've never used Sitting Girls website before, this is, this is just showing you how to navigate to the qualification handbook for the core, which is the 8730. So the first thing to go to on the Sitting Girls web page is obviously look at the, arrow, the first arrow, which is show, pointing to, showing the points to the search bar, type in the four digit number, which is for the core component, and this is the 8730, then click on the search button. When it loads up, which you can see on the bottom left hand side of our screen, the second arrow is pointing at the T level technical qualification in engineering and manufacturing core. And that is the 8730. When you click on this link, this will take you to the information page, which is on our next slide. Next slide, please, Sam. So now we have clicked on the link on the previous slide. We are now greeted with the page on our left hand side of our screen. So this will show you the title page which is the T-level technical qualification in engineering manufacturing core, which is the 8730, and the inf information page about the qualification, which is uh, also on, on the screen. The information page will also show the three pathways. So to go to, to go to the documents which support the core assessments, at the top, you can see information page. So, you, so that's on top of our screen, and there's another tab which shows documents. So when you click on the documents tab, this will open up the web page, which you can see on our right hand side of our screen. This page has got key information to support centres. So the first red tab is the assessment materials, which has the core exam for paper one and the mark scheme to support this. And we'll, we'll, have, and we'll have the core exam for paper two. And again, we'll have the mark scheme to support this as well. On the next tab, tab down, uh, next drop down box down, this will have the key information support with the employer set project for each of the three pathways. It's important to have, to have a look at the sample materials, which are there to support centres for the three assessments in the first year. Then we have the centre documents and each of the documents in the handbook, for each of the documents in the handbook, each of the chosen pathways. Next slide, please, Sam. So on this slide, we're going to, have a, we're going to navigate to the uh, maintenance installation and repair pathway. So the same principles like when we look for the core. So the first thing to do, go to the City and Girls web page. You'll see the search bar where the first arrow is pointing. And in the search bar, type in the four digit number, which is in this case for the maintenance installation and repair is the 8712. Uh, uh, when, when the screen loads up, you'll see at the bottom left hand side of our screen, where the second arrow is pointing, this shows the T-level technical qualification in maintenance, installation and repair for the engineering manufacturing, which is, which is the 8712. When you click on the link, this will then take you to the T-level page for the MIR pathway, which will show key information and documentation. So like, like the core web page, which we see on our previous slide, we have inf the information page, which is for the MIR pathway, and next to the information tab, we have the document tab. When you click on the document tab, this will open up a screen, which, we'll, which you'll see on the right hand side of our screen, which will show the tab for assessment materials for each of the five OSs. And underneath, we have again the center document tab that was this will show the, MR, the MIR handbooks for each of the pathways. 
Next slide, Lisa. Uh, the other way in which you can get to these pages, uh, again, going back to the City and Guild's homepage, and we are now looking at the image on the right-hand side of our screens with where the red arrow is pointing, which shows tier levels. Hover over this, and underneath it will show the resource hub. Click on the resource hub, which will take you to the resource hub support page, which you can see on our left-hand side of our screen. Then you're greeted with some drop-down menus. The drop down box, which you will need to select, is the specification center documents. And then you can select either the core, which is the 8730, or any of the three chosen pathways. Next slide, Lisa. So, on this slide, we're now going to look at the specification handbook for each of the pathways. Uh, so, we have a link on the top right hand corner of our screen, which, uh, which will take you to these handbooks. Uh, when using these handbooks, please check that you're using the most up-to-date version. The one which you can see on screen is version 1.1. Uh, but always check that you're using the latest version of these handbooks. Next slide, please, Sam. So on this slide, this is showing the 17 units or elements which make up the core. Uh, regardless, regardless of which pathway the learners are doing, all learners who are studying on a T-level engineering programme we we'll need to do all 17 units or elements which are on screen. As you can see on screen, the big hitters are, big hitters are the unit four and, you, and unit five, the science, which both carry 90 gun learning hours. When you go to the Sitting Girls web page, there is a tutor resource uh, page or, or tab, which there is support material support for each unit. So this contains things like PowerPoints, schema works, worksheets and multiple choice questions which are there to aid and support with delivery for the core component. Next slide please sir. So now I was going to look at uh, the key date schedule which can be found on page 35 of the uh, design and development uh, pathway handbook. So breaking this down in, in the red boxes we have the component, the series, the exam type, the calendar month and the assessment window. So, so core exam one, the first series, which will be a written exam, and this will be sched uh, uh, scheduled between May and June 2023. This will be set date, just like a GCSE or A level exam. The second one is the core exam two for the first series, which again will be a written exam, and this will be scheduled between May and June 2023. And the final assessment is the employer set project for the first series. The exam type is a project which will be carried out between March and May 2023. And these are set dates with assessment windows. It's important to remember if the three of these assessments in the same window. So with the retakes, the retakes for exam one and two are scheduled for November 2023. When it comes to the OS in year two, there is only one series in that year, and the exam type is a project, which is scheduled for February, May 2024 assessment window. So it's important to look at the pathways which learners are doing so you can plan around this. Again, which can be found on page 35 from the handbook. Next slide, please, sir. Right, shall I pass you over to Samantha? Thank you, Jennifer, just go through that with us. So I was going to look a bit about delivery models and timetables and curriculum plans. So as we are in first year of delivery, we have got the curriculum models and timetables that we put together, planned together. And these are located on that resource or page. It's just like how John has to show you Click on the link, which is called curriculum delivery planners. On the next couple of slides, you'll see what's perfect. So such as um, timetables and Excel spreadsheets and curriculum delivery planners to help to plan that resource as well throughout that year and also in preparation for examinations. Um, if your semester rise or if your academic year is less than 36 weeks, again, you can... So some centres have asked of us being delivered in different ways this academic year and what we have noticed that when we put our first webinar regarding curriculum planning, some centres have actually followed our model. So roughly, if you're going to deliver a T-level over 36 weeks, and 
then you're looking at an average of 21 to 24 hours a week in centre. So the learners must be in centre with an average of 21 to 24 hours a week in centre. And that is to make sure that that core content, those 17 elements, is covered within those guided learning hours of 680. As you can see for this pure course, if you're just going to do the pure core in the first year and then, then break into an industry placement, what you have noticed that we have mapped some of the units together so they can be delivered by side by side. So, for example, on a Tuesday, units one and unit two have been put together. On a Wednesday, we've got units 10 and 11, so engineering and manufacturing and then quality management. And then also in, in the afternoon, we've got units 13, 15 and 17, so business, finance, project. And then Thursday, we've got personal, professional attitudes and behaviours and continuous improvement. And again, these are some units that can be put together. So you've got the same delivery staff is delivering that units as well. And as you can see on a Monday, the bigger units, such as the maths and the science, they are extended across a longer time duration as well. We have got that pastoral support as well. So that 155 guided learning hours has been added into this as well. So the em employee enrichment pastoral. And also, if you look at the DFE websites as well, it, it tells you about additional hours that needs to be completed for the full T level as well. Industry placements. Some centres has reported back to us that some engineering companies shut on a Friday. But again, that's that flexibility where you can move, for example, Thursday into a Friday and then do the industry placement on a Thursday. It's up to you. This is all your flexibility. If you would base it on a delivery model, say 30 weeks and needed the extra six weeks for revision for examinations. And again, you would have to add some more hours into this timetable. So these are not set in stone. You can adapt them and based upon your own requirements as well. Some centres have came back to us and said that a T-level learner may be bored and can we put some occupational specialism into that T-level? Well, the answer is yes, of course you can. More practical you can put into the T-level, the better that the learner journey will give them and also making that so they've got that all-rounded engineering experience. So what we have done, we've moved that from our previous timetable, we've moved the pastoral support to the end of the day for a Tuesday and a Wednesday. Um, put that industry placement on a Thursday and then to making sure we've got some of that occupational specialist practical, we put that onto a Friday afternoon. Again, your flexibility, how you want to deliver it. But again, if you're going to go to a 36 week model delivering this part, then you're roughly a T-level learner to be in centre roughly between 25 to 28 weeks, uh, 25 to 28 days, hours in centres. And if on a Friday, and if you want to put that occupational specialism, you might need to put about a couple of more hours on top of it. So roughly a T-level learner should be in centre for four days a week. Um, again, that is also in preparation, preparing them for that um, online, that examination, so that employee set project in March, and then the paper-based examinations in May and June. So again, you've got that flexibility. Some centres that we've been working with also offer semester eyes. So... Can we semesterize it? Well, of course you can, not a problem. So what we did with this, we split this into 18 weeks blocks based on a 36 academic year, 36 week academic year delivery model. And again, we're making sure that we can cover some units off. So if, for example, in semester one, we put the maths, a bit more maths in the first year, then putting some pastoral care, some material, some health and safety, uh, working with engineering, manufacturing, et cetera. So we'll get that bit of information. And then for our second semester, what we did, we then looked at the other units, put in some science. So all the maths was been completed. Now we're looking at the science, quality management, business and commercials, etc. as well. So as you can see, some of the units are duplicated. And some of the units are had a bit more additional time as well to making sure that you're covered in that semester week split as well. Semester week split is ideal for those if you want to go into industry placement. So you can actually block, do your block release model or you can do your mixed models or whatever. Um, and again, it's how you want to work it as a centre as well. And again, these are based on a delivery model of 36 weeks. And again, if you're going to do it over 30 weeks, for example, or even 26 weeks, I've seen some centres do it in. Again, you make that requirement in your judgment and these can be edited as well. 
So that just gives a bit of where the example timetables are. They are available on our resource hub page now, and you can look at those in your own time. So thinking about planning the delivery. So what we've got now is that we're going to show you in how we would introduce the occupational specialism into the core. Um, so as you said, the core component is 680 guided learning hours. The occupational specialist is also 680. And again, you've got to try and get those information, recap sessions, etc., to put into that delivery curriculum planner. So how would you want to deliver it? How would you make sure that you get your industry placement as well? So these are all on Excel spreadsheets and a bit, bit squashed up on screen, but you might, but just to give you an overview. So starting in September, two weeks for induction, we're putting that dark green. And then weeks three to, three to 14, we do then that core component, which is in orange. So in other words, we have that induction week, two weeks of induction week, and then on week three, we start delivering the core component. As you notice, the employee set project, the revision, the occupational specialist, et cetera, is not identified. It's not being delivered in those in that first 14 weeks. So it's just basic upon that core component. Look at year two. So coming after the Christmas break, uh, we're still delivering that core component, but then City and Girls give you a notification that the um, employee set project is going to be released and we release this in the March time this year. So you need to start preparing for the employee set project. So some of your core lessons may be switched over to preparation for employee set project and using the samples that's on our website under the 8730. And that is on the, the purple colour. Some some centres after January, they like to get the learners out and get into that placement week as well. So that one week placement, so other one day placement. So in other words, on week 20 to 8, 26, we then start your in, industry placement as well. So as you can see, we're starting to come a loss and are making sure that we're meeting those requirements as well for placement week. Um, the employee set project um march it's been delivered it's delivered over a month um again to get those hours in and again different pathways have different durations of the employee set project and how many hours needs to be completed so within that month time so this year it's going to be started on the 13th of march and all the work needs to be submitted by the 31st of march so again you've got that flexibility within your timetable to do that employee set project also touch upon some of those core components as well if your timetable is flexible regarding that as well so we have our easter break and then we come back and then we go back to the core component for the examination period so the exams are in june may june time and we need to start from some revision exam series so we start preparing for the revision for the examinations as well as you can see on this timetable, we've been a 36 week. We're still still covering some of that core component, but it's not just purely covering that core. It's actually some revision topics as well. So in other words, making sure that we've got the revision, making sure ready for that examination week as well. And then straight away in the May, June time, we will then sit, the learners will sit their exam. So the June time, the learners come and sit their examination. And in that period of time, and that was that's in that blue set, that black blue colour as well. What you'll also have in the April to June time, April to July time, is that once completed and everything's been sub submitted to City and Girls for marking, then we will then do our results week. And our results week is in August. So it's always going to be on the A level series. So when you sit out the A level series, that's when they're going to release our results to the learners. And what they've sat on the core, what they've got for paper one and paper two and also what they've got for the employee set project and what's the overall grade on that core as well. You may not think that your learners are ready to sit the employee set project in March and also in, in the exams in May and June. So you do have that opportunity as it would be, usually be referred to as the resit series or the first retake. So you could wait and not sit the examinations and not and sit the examinations in October, November time. And again, that's that flexibility where you might have to move it into the year two. So 
So this timetable is now thinking about putting that occupational specialism into that delivery schedule. So again, we've got that core, core component and we've got the retake series. So that could be the first sit or the retake, depends on what you have, when you want to deliver your semester. And then straight away after September, we get that delivery of the occupational specialism assessment. And again, industry placement is running straight through that as well. So after the examinations, they're still on their industry placement going forward as well. The revision sessions will start popping up. So you could do it in September because the examination series for the retakes or first reset is in November, December time. So again, you got that opportunity to start preparing and revising for the retakes or first sittings and then when these series are going to be made available as well. So from January to March, we're still doing that occupational specialism, picking up that industry placement and hopefully by the time we've done that industry placement, we've managed to get our amount of guided hours into that. And then we will then start in releasing the synoptic assessment, or in other words, the practical OS assessment. We will release it to centres two weeks before. Um, you will get your um, documentation about what equipment you need. And then from there, you will then get the assessment for the learners that will start delivering that assessment as well. As you can see, some of the occupational specialism running across when we're doing that practical. And that's just to make it upon the theory, because again, the specialism is more about practical and also um, if you're doing like fault finding or design and stuff like that. So again, you can have a mix and match of how you want to deliver that occupational specialism, but you have got that limited window when it's got to be delivered from and to. Right down to the end, again, you've got the occupational specialism, you've got the synoptic assignments, and then right to the end industry placement or being well we might not need to sit in the june exams for re any more retakes or so what we would then do all your results from your year one and year two will be published together as a results date in august and again that will give that t-level learner that final overall grade So thinking about assessment methods now, of how many hours we need to put into our timetable and etc. So each pathway has different numbers of assessment hours uh, to be delivered. So all the exam papers are set at two and a half hours. But the employee set project depends and differ from different pathways. So for example, design and development is 18 and a half hours to complete. All the occupational specialists are different as well in each pathway. So again, you need to identify which occupational specialist you're going to be delivering. But to complete that one synoptic assignment um, for the design and development pathway or for all four different pathway or occupational specialisms are at 34 hours each. If you look at maintenance, installation and repair, the employee set project is only 12 and a half hours on this one and the occupational specialism for all five different se sections are 22 hours so again mechanical mechatronics electrical control and light electric vehicle all their assessments are 22 hours for engineering manufacturing and process control the employee set project is 15 hours and within this occupational specialism, you've got different types of durations to complete the practical. And this ranges from 24 hours and 15 minutes to 26 hours and 15 minutes. So composites is 24 hours, where fabrication and welding is 26 hours and 15 minutes. So you've got some different types of assessment pathways as well. As with anything as well, these you will see from previous series as well. So we are sitting the exam, pa ex exam paper in June. So you, we will be releasing the papers onto our website for that series and you'll be able to see what type of exam paper. So as we go throughout delivering the T-level, you also get sample papers as well to support your delivery.
So, anyone new to T levels or any, anyone new to any new qualifications going forward, we'd like to support our centres in any way we can do. So, please make sure that you sign to our T level newsletter update and you'll also get some updates and different communications regarding what's happening with Gandhi in the world of T levels. Um, blend approach to communication delivery. You notice that most of us are on the road now, technical advisors are on the road. You might notice it via our LinkedIn pages. Um, where we're showcasing our products, so again, networks, events, and face-to-face -face events. Um, E-bulletin content and email updates has always been showcased and shared. And then we've also got our website where we'll give you regular updates as well. So support and guidance on the T-level. Um, we've got the timeline going forward. So if you're in pre-delivery or in delivery, you've got a timeline when different types of events will be going off and what how to prepare as well. We've got a dedicated provider focus group. We'll talk about all anything called T levels, and we're hoping to kick that off again soon for those who've previously joined us. Our employers, who we work closely with, but on the T level as well, they have an employee industry board and they meet every quarterly. And again, you, your employers can join our industry board. E bulletin that comes out um, quarterly as well, so you'll be able to see that e bulletin and what's coming updated. Our specifications, um, any changes, so please make sure that you're working on the correct version number. Resource Hub is where everything you need to know about anything to do with T-Level, so how to apply for approvals through City and Girls, um, curriculum planning, key date schedule for an examination is going to be, um, reset fees, cost for registrations, all your teaching materials, that's all available on our Resource Hub. For recruitment and open evenings, we've created a dedicated flyer for our learn for the learners. So what you can do is on PDF format, so you can print it out and show the flyers, or even having a rolling on big screens when you come through. And then also you've got dedicated technical advisors in different pathways, like myself, who, who can support you throughout your T level journey. So what we have, so what we've done so far, we're going to resource development for the core and then for the pre-in-delivery centres, we're now going to do support for the exam. So you can, again, you can come and join that. And again, a lot of face-to-face -face events, what's popping up as well. As always, any events and networks and webinars and recordings, events and stuff, we can put on our T-Level homepage. And, you, and once you get a copy of this presentation, you can click on that link and it will automatically take you to that page. Um, what you also got as well is our recorded webinar. So if you're not already identified that one, we have got our recorded go to webinar channel. Um, again, with that webinar channel, you can see everything we to do with T levels regarding apprenticeships, regarding on program qualifications. So I do recommend you have a look at that channel as well. And again, please make sure you sign up for any e bulletins or updates, etc., regarding what's happening in the world of T-levels. Like I promised, some website support providers. So if you're thinking about transition programmes, we did a webinar a couple of months back about transition programme that we offer at City and Girls. And again, if you want to look about the delivery framework, so these will send starting to be updated. So once the government updates the framework for 23-24, then we will update this link as well. ETF Foundation, if you've not already signed up to the Education Training Foundation, I do recommend there's a lot of professional development courses going ahead and how they can support you with providers. Um, capital funding, funding's now, some of it's been closed off, so they get the capital bidding for new equipment and new buildings, etc. But again, you can see on that website there. And again, updated what's just come through um, last week regarding industry placement delivery guidance as well. So again, click on the delivery guidance from the government website. You can see regarding the updates to industry placements as well. Hodder Education is creating an engineering manufacturing textbook, and this is going to be published in June this year. Um, we have got it, it is going to be available in two different formats, so print and e-booster book, um, covering the T-level cores, the core components, examinations, employee set projects, and a bit more information that we share with our resource as well. Um, we have got a sample, advanced sample chapter on our website under the tutor resources section, but again, 
If you visit holidayeducation.co.uk slash T-Levels, you can sign up for when the book is pre-released. So you can do a look at a, a copy, what's not being publicised, and see if you want to keep it or not. Or you can go speak to Gemma Simpson at Hold of Education, who will be able to help you as well. As always, with T-Levels, we've also been recruiting for associates to work with us. So if you're first year of delivering T-Levels or you're looking to deliver T-Levels, then we'll allocate you a TQA, a Technical Qualification Associate, and they will carry out your approval and supporting activities throughout your journey. So if you would like to become a TQA, again, you've got the opportunity to sign up on that link. We've got Chief and Principal Examiner roles going. We've got Marker Examiners for the actual Employee Set Project and the Core Paper 1 and 2. And also then we've got Moderator roles as well. So if you're interested in involving in delivery T levels, hey, it will support your centre in delivering T levels and also gives you a couple more understanding of what a T level is about as well. Full information is on our associate vacancies, but again, if you need any further information, then do get in contact with myself and I can pass you on to the right team. As always, we'd like to see what you would like to see going forward on T-Levels and how you, what would you like to see going forward on how we can support you. So we have got a survey. Um, that's on the link there. Um, again, do click on, do complete that survey for us. Again, we can tailor these webinars to suit your needs. We can change the times. So if you're thinking 2.45 is too late or you want to early mornings, again, do update us on that survey link form and we'll be able to hopefully um, come to your needs and what we need to do as well. So again, it's something we'd like to have feedback on. And that then comes to the end of the webinar. So I'd like to say thank you for joining. I've noticed we have no questions in the chat, so I hope that it's all good and you understand about curriculum planning. Um, but what we'll do, we'll leave it for a couple of more minutes. And if you need any questions, and please raise your, if you'd like to come online and speak to us or answer any questions through the chat. Thank you very much. So currently we have no questions coming through. So what I will do then, I will get, give you some time back. And um, so thank you for joining our webinar and we hope to see you on the next one.